Hello, viewer. Welcome once again, even to our series of the uh, sharing regarding the uh, eternal gospel. It's just a review of the previous uh, topic about the eternal uh, gospel or the full gospel. Full gospel is uh, uh, full and it is not short, it's not lacking. So this means it is in the fullness of God. The glory, it is not short of glory because glory is a full glory. And also there is a full righteousness of God, full holiness of God, full justification of life. So this one being full gospel, eternal gospel, this means this gospel has the character or the attribute of God, which is eternal. God is eternal. This means it is a gift from God. It is coming from God. God who never lacks or God who does not lack anything. He is full of everything. He is full of his glory. He doesn't lack. As in this, in uh, embracing this uh, full gospel, we have some stages, like previously also, I, I had also shared with you about the life cycle of a butterfly. So there is the, the, that stage of that stage of eggs, and then we have the stage, the second stage of the uh, caterpillar or the larva. We have the, the other stage of the uh, pupa, and then we have the stage of a now butterfly. This is a cycle which is one way, and there is no reverse of this. Once it was eggs, then comes to caterpillar, pupa, then butterfly. There is no reverse of this. So in this full gospel, this means it is not like an eventuality, you know, it is not like uh, something which is gradual, but in these stages whereby we need to know this, we need to have faith in this, and then so that we don't have any doubt, we can be fully assured or having that full blessed assurance of this uh, full gospel. So in this, we are going to be taking in this uh, series uh, in, the, in the Bible, and that is why God has written this volume of the book from Genesis to Revelation, so that in this, we can have the faith in the words that we are listening as God is explaining unto us, as God is guiding unto us. So without any doubt, our hearts can be filled with this word of God, and boldly we can testify about this uh, full gospel. In this, uh, that is why we need to know about the concept of sin, majorly because this is what made Jesus Christ uh, to leave heaven and everything to come here on earth and reveal this uh, gospel, reveal this salvation on the cross. So it is a very big issue, it's a big issue in the heart of God, because when we read in the book of Romans, God is saying that uh, in the gospel, this is where there is the power of God. Therein is the power of God. So the power of God is in the gospel, and this is gospel unto the eternal salvation. So this is where God exhausted all his power in revealing this uh, salvation in this full gospel. So in this, we must also clearly know about the origin of sin. And that is why there is that concept of sin, as God has revealed in this volume of the book, which is the Bible. So knowing this concept of sin, it's, you know, we, have the, we must know what sin is, and uh, where did the sin originate from, and how did man, you know, was, how was man affected? Or how did man get this, and how, how did he get this sin? Or how was he involved in this matter of sin? And then also, we should know the difference between sin and sins. In this also, we should know about sin and law. The difference between sin and law, so that we cannot be also uh, confused in between, and also, we should know about sin 
and repentance. Law and repentance. So these things which they should be very clear in our hearts so that you know uh, this eternal gospel can be uh, rooted, can also be established in our hearts so that we can have this full blessed assurance in this full gospel. So to start with, uh, we are going to see the origin of sin. Where did sin originated from? We must know the origin. Like a doctor, when a patient goes to the hospital, that doctor, that qualified doctor, must establish, must know the cause of the sickness, the origin of the sickness must establish that cause so that he knows the right medicine to give to this patient. So this is a good doctor. So Jesus Christ is the chief physician. On the other hand, he is the chief physician. So that is why he came to cure this sickness of sin that takes one not only in this life but also in the life to come. And there is that eternal punishment. If this sin, if there is no solution, if someone has not gotten the solution of this sin. So we must think about, and that is why clearly God has revealed unto us in the scriptures. So first we are going to see from the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 14. Uh, this is where we are going to see now about the origin of sin. I'm going to read. You are the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. He says, you are the anointed cherub. You are the anointed cherub that covers or covers so god here is talking about this uh, one archangel he was given this position he was one of the uh, cherubims that covered that throne of god so this is just a, a position not just to be taken by any other angel he was the anointed cherub that covered it and this one he was the chief angel so this means he was very close to God. He was working closely and to God. Anything that came out and, you know, he knew about this. Maybe the feeling also how God was feeling because every time he was, could see the face of God. And that is why also the other angels could admire him. He got the first hand information. Even if it is information that God wanted to deliver to this uh, angelic host, this archangel was the first one to know that this chief angel, he was the anointed cherub that covered it. So this is a very, very high position, which even it was not easy, and it is not easy for other angels even to get this position. Then when we see in verse 15 of the same chapter, that is uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15, uh, says, you are perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. So this angel or that angelic host, eh, they were made, created perfect. Because angels, they don't have the body, they don't have this flesh, they are spirits, they are ministering spirits. So here in the, at the end of this verse 15 says, eh, till iniquity was found in thee. Yes. Let us see here in this verse, till iniquity was found in, in you. So iniquity first was found in this one archangel who was the anointed and covering cherub who was very close unto God. And then that is the origin of iniquity. Let's see verse 16 also in this of the same chapter, Ezekiel 28 verse 16. By the abundance of your uh, trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. 
Therefore, I cast you as a prophet thing out of the mountain of God. I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. So here says, by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Here, there is also sin. Thou, uh, until you sinned. So, sin and iniquity was found in the heart of this one archangel, who was the covering cherub. It was found in his heart. This is where that sin originated from. Then what happened? When you see in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, what is God saying? God is very clear unto, unto this. God does not and cannot, will never compromise with the sin. What is he saying? Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. So God is holy. His dwelling place, heaven, is holy. His angels must be holy. His first son is holy because he's born uh, of the holy God. And this is Jesus Christ. So God hates sin. Then what will happen to this one archangel who ministered, who was the covering cherub? What will happen after sin and iniquity was found in him? Let's go back to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 17. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted uh, your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I've cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that you might gaze, uh, might gaze at you. Yes, yeah, so here says, I cast you. At the end of that verse, it says, I'll cast you to the ground. I'll cast thee to the ground. This means what? You know, there is no room for this. Uh, whichever position he was having, it doesn't matter even with the time, how many years you number it, even the last number you have in your counting. Even we cannot count because we don't know which time, that period time that was the covering cherub. We don't know. We don't know how many, how he was so much submissive. We cannot count. He was so submissive, obedient unto God. How he, he received, you know, the, 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 the message from God. How he, you know, he received from God and then he could de deliver to other angels and these angels, they were ministering angels, they could deliver that word of God, that heart of God for all that time which we cannot count. But then when sin was found in him, this shows how God hates sin. It doesn't matter about sin, it doesn't matter about, you know, how you have done but you can see many people, they are way, being weighed down by their works that they have done. And this one has become qualification for them and full blessed assurance or the, like their assurance for them to enter into the kingdom of God or to have the right relationship with God. This is what they are counting. It is as if, you know, they have qualified, like they sat in, in a, they attended a class they sat, you know, uh, for exams and also uh, they got the highest marks and, uh, you know, they qualified. And this is what the documents they are just holding until now, waiting for that day of judgment so that they are going to claim back whatever they have done. You know, when we compare ourselves with this archangel, you know, that, uh, that also sin was found in him, iniquity was found in him, originated in him. We cannot, we cannot compare how much, even how many years. For you and me, it's only 70 and 80. If maybe we are born as we received salvation, of which is also difficult, 
we cannot say that I'm 70 years old and I receive salvation and I still say my age is seven. No. But even if it is this, it is, we cannot, it's, that is just a drop in the ocean. Even it's not, a, it's something which is uh, negligible. We cannot count on that. But people, they are so much deceived by the same devil that they are counting on their, what they have done, what they are doing. It is not what we are doing. It's not what I am doing. It's not what you are doing. It is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That is what is uh, accountable before God. So everything, you know, God is saying, I'll cast you. I'll cast you to the ground. <clears throat> I'll cast you to the ground. So there is no room for him. So uh, we can see, you know, he had that high position, you know, the high position, that position of the archangel. Even others, they, they, they also admired him. Maybe they were giving him some, you know, some credits. You know, ah, this one is like, you know, perfect. You know, he was perfect. He was the model of uh, beauty. He, he was the model of, you know, that wisdom and brightness. So others were just admiring him and they were just, you know, waiting to hear from him that message that he received from God. But when sin was found in him, when iniquity was found in him, you know, all oh, this one was nothing. Because God does not count on this. And then, you know, uh, then what happened after when sin was found in him? Then God said, I'll cast you out. I'll cast you to the ground. There is no room. I'll cast you to the ground. There is no room for you in heaven. There is no room, you know, in my presence. Then what happened? When we see in the book of Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12 and verse uh, 7, Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So there was that, there was war in heaven. Yeah, so uh, this, uh, uh, the fallen angel, this one archangel, there was that war, and then there was those angels on the side of God. So this a fallen angel had also convinced a third of the angels in heaven. You know, this third of the angels in heaven, they have never been in earth. You know, they are not made of uh, the dust of the ground. They have been to heaven beholding the, you know, the glory of God, the throne of God, where there is no sin. They are the ones who are just hearing from God. For all that time, we cannot be able to count. But this one archangel convinced them. Convinced them. Was able to convince them. One third of them. So this means uh, two thirds, they were on the side of God. Anyway, it is the majority, but God does not work with the majority or minority. God works with his own one, by himself. So there was war that now we have Michael and the angels on the side of God, the two thirds. And then we have this, uh, you know, fallen angel. This one archangel who was called Lucifer. And then uh, he, 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 with a third of these angels, there was war in heaven. Then who, will, who won? Still he was not deprived the powers, you know, the powers of God. So this means he's fighting God with his power. So how can God defeat himself? There is no way. Whether they were two-thirds, whether they were how many all of them, and only God remained himself, there is no way. God has never been defeated at any one single time. We should not think about this, that there was any time that God was defeated. Not, not, not at all. So, and then, what happened, you know? What happened? Who won uh, this war? We can see in verse 8 of, the, of, of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12, 
uh, verse 8 says what? But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This means what? They did not prevail. They did not, they did not win. They could not defeat God. And there was no place found for them in heaven. So as God has said, I cast you to the ground because of sin. Also, those who followed, those other, are that of the angels, you know, those who followed this foreign angel, these are the ones who became demons. And then they were cast into this ground. You know, God has not compromised with sin. It's not that, oh, I have kept the law, I have been, you know, I have been struggling by the law, and only, you know, out of ten... I have just struggled and uh, uh, eight of them I have managed, but I'm only remaining with two. Then God, I think I deserve your mercy. This is what people are thinking. And this is the idea of Satan the devil, who is a deceiver. Also, if he convinced this are that of, of, of the angels in heaven, what about you and me? We are just a snack. This is just a snack to the devil. Just with one time. Because he knows many things. The devil also knows the Bible. He has been to heaven. He has been to heaven. He knows. So he knows how to... He's the one who changes the truth of God into a lie. It looks like it's a truth, but it's a lie. And that is how people, they have fallen into this deception. So in this, uh, when they were cast, you know, this one, that of the, of the angels, with their leader, this one archangel, into the, into the ground. Verse 9, we can see, <clears throat> verse 9 of the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 12. So the, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil, and Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So finally, there was no room in heaven for him. This means what? God is showing us that, you know, he hates sin. He does not compromise with sin. He does not excuse sin. Whether a dot of sin, whether a sin that cannot be seen, you know, we need to, I don't know which kind of microscope, you know, that kind of microscopic, microscopic sin, even that one, does not have room in heaven. Even that one does not have room in heaven. But people, they think, ah, I'm just having some few sins. I have tried to manage also, like how I manage my sin. People, they have ways on how they manage their sin. Like, you know, cleansing themselves every day, you know, like this in this time of uh, the, the time of this uh, uh, Corona era. I'm sorry to just put it in this. You know, there are many words that people they are they, they are putting in this. You know, this is where now you know we 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 are trying to cleanse ourselves. You know, cleansing our hands. But how many times you are doing it? Because we don't know where it is. Where 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 is it? And also, you know, everyone is a suspect of himself. You should not, be, no, we should not, you know, just take other people that they are suspect. So also, you should suspect yourself, not others, you yourself. So it is about how you are going to take care. It's about how you are taking care of yourself. It's not another person. So we are washing our hands. We are sanitizing, you know, our hands. But how many times? And this is just a simple virus, which will have an end, of course. What about, you know, what about sin? People, they think they can sanctify themselves, sanctify, sanitize themselves, you know, by doing one, two, three, you know, by sanctifying themselves, by asking for forgiveness. They have, you know, they have, they have their ways of doing it. Which is not the way of God. 
Yeah, so these angels, when they were cast into the ground, let's see verse, uh, let's see verse 9 of uh, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was cast to the earth, and his angels uh, were cast out uh, with him. So uh, now they have come, this group of angels, one third, many of them, with their head leader, they came into this world. With what? Sin. Iniquity. You know, this is not like uh, how we just shut everything down, I don't know, but anyway. But they were cast here on earth. They were cast here. Whereby also, afterwards, this is when, you know, the first human being, the first human being, was was also was created because there is that time we, we don't know clearly about uh but it must have been this angel this you know uh this uh, uh the devil and the demons satan they came first here on earth before man was made as we see we don't know in which year anyway we don't know in which year because god used uh six days uh in uh, his works of his uh, creation. He was six days. In the seventh day, this is when he had a rest. So we don't know which year. And this is not that the normal days of the week, first weeks, first day, second day. No, no, no. 1,000 years is one day. One, one day is 1,000 years. So it should be, it is, there is no number. Maybe we continue adding zero, 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 zeros. Because this is the time of God, it, which is different. God is not like, under this crock, under this, under the sun, counting the the number of days, minutes, seconds, and the number of years. Not so. So we don't know when. But then he was cast here. Whether whether man came later, or you know, before, or uh, he is the one who came first. But then now there is that threat. This is not like a coronavirus whereby, you know, we shut, you know, the, the every, uh, you know, gateway or every gateway entering into our country, Kenya, so that we can curb, so that we can control. But then these angels, they have come. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having a great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Here there is the lamentation to the people of the earth. Here it says, woe unto the inhabitants, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you. So there is that lamentation. This is so terrible. This is so terrible. So what is he going? Because now he has come with a mission also. He has come with a plan. He has come with a purpose. He has come with a mission. And what is, you know, what is his aim? He's just aiming to man. It is to you and me. And that is why there is that lamentation in heaven. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and also of the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having that great wrath. Because he knows that his days are numbered. Why? Because he knows already, you know, he has been judged. There is no reverse of this. So then, what happens, you know, how, what happens and how did he manipulate man or how did he did he succeed to you know uh, plant that seed of sin in man and then this is the origin of sin it originated from this one archangel who became Satan uh, the devil so is it the same sin is it the same judgment so if it is the same sin that also was planted in man 
that what also God is calling sin. And this is what, why he made this uh, everlasting judgment for this sin. If it is the same, then God is God of justice. Then God is fair in everything. But if it is different, then this like sin in man is different from that sin that originated from this one archangel who, who became, you know, who, 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 who became a foreign angel, who became Satan the devil. If it is different, then we could be having different judgments. But when I see the, from the, the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there is only one judgment. The judgment of God is not like our judgments, which we are having here on here on earth. No, it is the same judgment. So in the next session, we are going to see whether he managed, how did he manage to put this in, to plant this in in man. So uh, thank you very much even for your time and also for listening when you are sharing with you. Uh, I hope to meet you in the next session. Thank you very much and God bless you.